Here's the ICO Model 145 signal tracer that I showed you in a previous video. And I decided on Christmas Eve that to open it up and get it going again since this would be a useful piece of equi equipment for my workbench. So I started off by replacing all of the electrolytic and paper capacitors that were mostly shot. You can see the pile right there. And it was obvious that this was a a kit piece of equipment judging by all the poorly soldered connections in it. In fact there's still there's still a lot of cleanup that I'm gonna have to do but anyway so after replacing the capacitors the unit still didn't function right. It functioned a little better than it did but it still didn't function properly. And that's a brings us to a point that I'd like to make. I know a lot of guys that repair vintage electronics. Their their first their first reply is replace all the capacitors and it'll work like brand new. Well, yeah, I agree that it's probably a good thing to replace the older paper and electrolytic capacitors, but more times than not replacing all of the capacitors is not the be-all end-all that's just the beginning there's usually more stuff that needs to be done to get this old equipment back in proper working order and since this one didn't work properly with capacitor replacement it was time to pull out my big yellow off-brand Chinese made digital multimeter to make some voltage measurements and when I hit the plate of the audio output tube, I heard something pop inside of my DMM, and that was the end of it. And, of course, it didn't blow the fuse. And the inside of the meter consists of mostly surface-mounted stuff, so repairing it would probably be not worth the effort. In fact, there's the remains of it over there on the floor. You can see where I pitched it. So I... Needing a, needing a meter real quick and not having a lot of cash here right after Christmas, I ran up to Radio Shack and bought this cheap meter that was actually twenty one ninety nine, which was probably about $18 more than it was worth. And then I had to spend an extra $6 on a special 12-volt battery that the meter takes. Now why they couldn't have designed it to run on a standard 9 volt battery like every other meter I've owned is beyond me but I guess that's just their way of forcing you to buy a special battery for six bucks and this meter was of course made in China so I don't know I'm just gonna use this meter long enough to get me by and then I'm gonna order me a a good DMM it will likely hold up longer than these crappy Chinese things that I've been buying. And look how cheap this meter is. It doesn't even have plug-in test leads. Every other digital multimeter that I've owned, even the little cheap $9 jobs from Walmart, had plug-in test leads. But not this thing, but like I said, this is nothing that I plan to use long term. This was something to get me by until the first of the month so to speak now let's see if we can find out what's wrong with this signal tracer provided this meter actually lasts that long okay I think we've got it taken care of all it needed was some more uh, solder connections cleaned up and the controls sprayed with contact cleaner and it appears to be working fine now Okay, here it is all put back together. All I need to do is make up some test probes for it. And yes, I have the the RF probe that came with this. It's just I've hidden it from myself. Or, in other words, I've lost it. But I promise I'll lay my hands on it real soon and get this thing fully going again. But basically all this is is an audio amplifier with when used in conjunction with the RF probe it can you know trace weak RF signals through the circuits of a radio and amplify them and
course, the results will come out the speaker here. Here's our signal trace function. And as you can tell, the amplifier is working, so... So, as far as I'm concerned, this thing's fixed. All I have to do is fix up the probes for it, and it'll be ready to go. Okay, thanks for watching, and more to come later. Okay, I didn't hide the probe too, probe too good for myself, because I just located it. But it's in real sad shape, as you can see here. Which I'll have to take this apart and rebuild it, or either just make another probe. I don't think there's much to these, just a 1N34 crystal diode and a resistor and piece of coax cable. Shouldn't be too difficult to make one in case I can't repair this one, which I'm sure I can repair it. But anyway, there you go. Thanks for watching, and more to come later. Okay, so I'm really not done yet. I disassembled this probe and thought I'd show you the inside of it. All it is is a a crystal diode in series with a resistor. In this case, this uses a GE 1N48 diode, and it looks like a primitive device to me. Let's see, we can enlarge it here and see the markings on it. And it has a 3 8 on it. I don't know whether that's a date code for 1953, but that would sound about right. GE 1N48. And there's our resistor. So I just cut off the old coax cable. It was so cracked and brittle that it's, it's going to have to be replaced anyway. But there you are. I really am gone this time. Hopefully the next time you see this, it'll be in action and I'll show you how to use it in troubleshooting a radio. Alright, thank you for watching and more to come later.